welcome to our program, Birch Tree Painting with Yarn. This is our Take and Make program, um, and it's going to teach you the technique of a yarn resist in order to make your painting. The birch trees are beautiful trees. Um, they have this beautiful white bark with the little black lines on it. And during the year, they're mostly green leaves. And in the fall, the leaves turn beautiful colors, mostly yellow. But um, in your badge, you should also have a little information on birch trees with some beautiful pictures of the birch trees. And you can also go online to your library website, uh, mcplibrary.org, and under the children's tab, there are databases that you can look at, and that's where I actually found the information um, that's in the bag. So you can go check that out too. Um, also in your bag, you should have one canvas board, four little cups of paint, and then a little baggie I put with some yarn, a couple of cotton balls, a couple of Q-tips, And since we're painting, you might want to put something down, either some old newspaper or something, um, open up a grocery bag and put that down just to protect the table that you're working on. And what we're going to start by doing as I kind of organize my supplies over here is you're going to start with the yarn, find the end, and you're going to wrap this around your board. Um, I'm thinking that the trees are going to go vertically on the board, so I'd like to wrap the yarn vertically because wherever we place the yarn, the paint is not going to go. And so that's going to leave us space, like white space, for our birch trees. And a couple of lines here. And you can, um, with the little tail on the back, you can put a piece of tape there to hold it, or you could just tuck it underneath the other. Um, the other strings of yarn. And the thickness that you make the yarn is the thickness of your trees. So here I went three wide and it makes a little bit of a thicker tree. This one is only two wide, it's a thinner tree. And it is nice to have them um, at a little bit different angles because the trees are not always straight up and down and you just wrap your yarn around as many times as you would like to make your trees. And then you can either tuck the extra in the back or you can snip it and put a piece of tape. I have one that I've already done. And it looks like this. And I use just a little piece of scotch tape on the back to hold it on. And then we're ready to start painting. What we're gonna paint first is the background. So you can pick up your green and your blue. And usually uh, when you work on a painting, you wanna work from the top down. So I'm gonna do the sky first, and then I'm gonna do some of the grass on the bottom. And for this, since we wanna cover a large area, we are going to use our cotton ball and our clothespin. So you just open the clothespin and you squish the cotton ball inside and now this is your painting tool. So I'm going to dip it into the blue paint and I'm going to dab, dab, dab on the canvas to make a sky. Now maybe I want to make it really thick and have it be a very blue sky or maybe you want to leave some white spaces and maybe those are the clouds. So you can decide what you would like your sky to look like. The thicker you make it, the more blue sky and the thinner you make it, the more white clouds that you will have. See, it looks like blue sky and clouds. And the yarn is resisting it from going onto that part of the canvas.
and we're using a dabbing up and down because we don't want it to try and sneak in behind our trees. That's it. I'm just coming down to here and then I'm going to put a little bit of the green. I'm going to save this for later in case I need it. Just tuck it to the side. I'm going to use the green for the grass. Again, I'm going to take my cotton ball and my clothespin and open it up. Chomp, chomp, chomp. And dab it in the green. And dab it on the bottom. See, and it's good that I put a little cardboard because I got some paint on the cardboard. Okay, and this I'm gonna put to the side for later. You know, it's nice that these little cups of paint have a lid, you can just put it right in the lid. That way it doesn't even go on the table. Let me see if I can turn this around to show you. So here we have the sky and the grass in our painting. What do you think we're gonna put next? We're gonna put the leaves on the trees. So that's why we have a yellow and a red and some Q-tips. We're gonna use the Q-tips in the yellow and the red to put the leaves on. And again, you're just dabbing. I'm picking up a little bit of the blue paint. So I'm gonna turn my Q-tip around and use the other side. You could also, if you have time at home, you could let your background dry. Let the blue paint and the green paint dry and then come back and do your leaves later. And this video will still be there so you can stop it and pause it and watch the rest later if you want. I'm just gonna try and be a little careful and put some leaves on. Put some yellow. And then I'm gonna use another Q-tip and use some red, put some red leaves. And you can decide how much of each color you want. Maybe you want them to have a lot of red leaves. Maybe you want them to have a lot of yellow leaves. And I talked about the yellow paint mixing with the blue on the canvas. What do you think that the red and the yellow are doing? And what color do red and yellow make when they start mixing? They're maybe mixing on the canvas or they're mixing right on your little Q-tip. If you want, you can take the lid and scoop a little bit of the yellow. And using the clean side, did I say yellow? Scoop a little bit of the red, scoop a little bit of the yellow, and then mix them up right in the lid. Now you have a third color for your leaves. And it looks a little orangey. Now you can dab orange leaves on your painting. This one's getting very messy. so <laughs> My fingers are a little bit messy too. That's okay. We get that way in art sometimes, a little bit messy. And afterwards you'll wash your hands, no biggie. I like the orange. And you just keep going. You can fill it up as much as you like or as little as you like. This is what mine looks like so far. Yeah, add a little more yellow on top. So 
So now what I'm going to do, I feel like, I feel like I've completed this enough. I have this right in front of my face. I feel like I've completed this enough. I'm happy with the amount of paint on here. If you're happy with the amount of paint on yours, you can very carefully take the string off. And again, you might decide to do this after your painting is dry, because I'm pretty sure my fingers are gonna get messy with this one. Um, but I'm going to carefully unwind this so that we can see what it looks like. And so that we can finish our painting because we're not done yet. Nope. Okay, there's two more things that we wanna do. Here's what our painting looks like. And you can see the white birch tree trunks. But I'm gonna go back with my green. The green that we had on the cotton ball. And I'm gonna put a little extra grass at the bottom because maybe there's some grass in front of the trees. Maybe more in front of some, maybe not as much in front of others. I'll show you what that looks like. See, so now there's the grass in front and then there's the trees behind. The trees have all the colorful leaves on it and the blue sky behind that. And what's the last thing to do? If you have a black pen or marker at home, we're gonna make some of these black marks on the tree trunks so that it looks like birch tree. Okay, so we're gonna get our black marker and, and again, you can do this when this is dry. Otherwise, you're like me, you have to be very careful. And you make little horizontal, side to side, little marks or dots on your tree trunks. Even if you didn't have a pen or a marker, you could probably use a black pencil. And I'm trying to be very careful and avoid the paint. I'll show you what this looks like. So a few black lines, do you see it on this tree right here? A few black lines side to side to make it look like a birch tree. And I'm gonna keep doing that for all of the white birch trees in the painting. Some maybe have big fat lines, some maybe have skinny lines. Again, this is nature and this is art. So whatever you would like it to be, it can be. I'm gonna try something else. I'm coming a little bit down just one side of this tree with a little, some extra little dots to kind of finish off the edge of this tree. I'll show you what it looks like. It's kind of giving it a shadow side of the tree. you think see I, this tree right here and I put some extra little lines in or dots really just along the side kind of gives it a little bit more of a rounded shape like a tree trunk would be oh I wanted to hold it but my paint is still wet it's the nice thing about art you can take your time and enjoy the process of dabbing with your Q-tips. Enjoy the process of 
tapping or making lines with your marker. I think I made them very even on this side. I'm gonna show you what I mean. This last one, I think they're almost the same distance apart. So I think I'm gonna add some others in between make it look a little bit more like nature, like random, not so evenly spaced and organized. Put some on the other side. Some on this side. And there you have your finished birch tree painting using the yarn resist technique. I hope you enjoyed this program today. So long, be well, see you next time.